Hello, I'm Erica, owner and director of education at Erica's ATA. Welcome to my favorite topic, dry e-file pedicuring. This training will allow you to work smarter, not harder, when it comes to pedicuring. You'll achieve better, noticeable results with less physical strain on your body. I've spent years working alongside male masters and DPMs, learning all about different types of feet and processes. Today, I'm bringing you the best techniques to achieve beautiful and safe dry pedicuring process. One that can be easily introduced into your salon and perform on all clients. We're going to shake up the traditional soaking pedicure in order to create a safe and more results-driven service. We'll uncover the why dry is best and how your tools and techniques will make you more money while providing better results. After I greet my client, I'm simply gonna ask them, how do your feet feel? I'm going to get more out of my client's response than any kind of intake form. This gives the client an opportunity to tell me if they're experiencing any pain or discomfort. Most salons are not suited to hold onto medical information abiding by HIPAA regulations. So having clients fill out an intake form about their medical conditions is something I personally don't recommend. Okay, so our client said her feet feel good. And after taking a look at them, the service will be a basic dry petty. The client has healthy skin and needs basic cuticle work. I wanna begin this service with the end in mind. We can cut down on time when we have a clear goal that we're trying to achieve. So my objective is to remove dead skin cells off the nail plate and soften the callus skin at the bottom of the foot, also referred to as the planter side of the foot. So let's get started with the service. The first product I'm gonna use is the Poto Expert Foot and Shoe Deodorant. I am going to spray this all over my client's foot and what this is doing is it's killing the microbes, okay? So like, think of this as your cleansing period since where this is a waterless approach. I'm gonna put it in between the toes, it's diabetic friendly, and I'm just gonna let that sit for 30 seconds. Once I've done that, my next step is to grab the Cala softener. This is a urea-based product and I'm going to spray only the bottom side of the foot, just like this. I have found with this product, your best thing to do is to maximize and accelerate the ingredients is to actually rub the product in. You're gonna to wanna to let this sit between three, two to three minutes. So to keep the process moving forward, I'm now gonna start on the toenails. If you also notice, I only sprayed the bottom of the foot. I did not spray the toes and I don't wanna spray the toes. The only time that I want to spray the great toe is if my client is feeling any discomfort. They might not share that with you, so I'm gonna look for signs that might look like there's an ingrown or involuted nail, and I'm gonna give her great toe a little hug and say, how does that feel? Good. So I'm squeezing that. If there was any discomfort or pain, she would let me know, and then I would spray the callus softener on the toe. Because what that means is there's a lot of impacted skin cells and what I don't wanna do is create discomfort. So later on, I'm gonna clean that out, but I wanna soften it first. In this case, our client doesn't need that. So we've only sprayed the bottom of the feet. Let's continue the service moving forward. So while the callus softener is sitting, I'm gonna go ahead and move the service forward and I'm now gonna use my Boss Lady nippers. What I like about them is they're straight, smooth back. So it's really easy to just to get right under the toenail and do micro cuts. Just like that. I find that using nippers versus clippers allows me to not bend the toenails. So I get a cleaner cut without jeopardizing the nail and cracking it. And I also have clear visibility. The way to set the toenail up for success is to cut them straight across, no rounding, because that can cause an opportunity for ingrown toenails. The next product that I'm using is the Erica's Medium Diamond File. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do shaping. I'm gonna make sure it's straight. Even if my clients ask me to round the toenails, I'm just gonna educate them on why I don't prefer doing that straight across. How I'm holding my file is just like this and I'm pushing into the toenail and I'm using long strokes and maximizing my file. Our diamond files will outlast over 500 board files. And we tell people who are non-professionals that you'll lose it before it goes bad. And the reason for that is our products are made with 100% real diamond. 
What's really nice are these hand files can be used on hands or feet, just depending on the grit. So I have found that medium works the best for toenails and for gel. And they also make a great retail product. For that person who has everything, we can all benefit from a good file. Using a hand file also is really eco-friendly. Not just any e-file is gonna be able to give you the performance as well as the speed, because we can only be as quick as our process. Now that we have a soiled tool, your disinfection process is the same for your bits and your implements. So clean it off, warm soapy water, remove all of the debris, place it in your EPA regulated disinfection, and then if you choose to do that additional step of using an autoclave, there totally can be autoclaved as well. Now that we've cut and shaped the toenails, my next step is to use a cuticle pusher. And all I'm doing here is releasing the cuticle off of the nail plate. We are exfoliating the dead skin cells off the nail plate. So I don't need to take my pusher and scrape the dead skin cells, okay? Because I'm going to let the bits do that. All we're simply doing with our pusher is releasing the cuticle off the nail plate, all right? So today I'm gonna to be using the Petty Plus Toes Kit. That includes a diamond skin bit, the long and lean, and the unicorn. I'm gonna do on my client one foot with a unicorn and show you some techniques, and then on her other foot, we're gonna use the long and lean. In a service with a client, I would never do that back and forth like that. However, because this is an educational setting, I wanna show you how both bits can excel, and sometimes there is an opportunity to use both, but for right now, we're just gonna use the unicorn. All right, so I'm gonna start with the unicorn bit now at between 10 and 12,000 RPMs. That is a range, so depending on your e-file, with the journey right now, I'm at 12,000 RPMs and working in the forward direction. I'm in the forward direction and I'm gonna work down the left side of the toe. I'm gonna to do all five toes and then I'm gonna turn my machine off and switch to the reverse direction. What I'm trying to accomplish right now is to lift the cuticle up and off the nail plate. So these diamond particles are gonna exfoliate the dead skin cells off the nail plate. So look what I can achieve just in two passes. I'm keeping the bit parallel to the nail plate and I'm using that point and just grooming the dead skin cells, just like this. I never want to floss the toe, so what I'm doing is I'm just changing the angle and I can literally feel where there's buildup. I'm also cleaning off the dead skin cells to, get, to allow my polish to sit better on the nail plate, so you're gonna get a longer lasting wear and it's diabetic friendly. If you feel like the dead skin cells aren't coming off, always feel free to increase your RPMs. You want to be very gentle. It's like petting a little kitten. We're not taking our e-file and bits and pushing into the nail plate. We are just ever so lightly grooming, keeping the bit parallel and sweeping, 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 sweeping. So when you have more overgrown cuticle like that, that's when I really like the long and lean, but I wanted to go ahead and just show you what a basic looks like. Now that I have done all five toes, I'm just gonna simply turn my e-file off, put it in reverse, and I'm gonna work the opposite direction. So we always want to work in the direction opposite of what our bit is spinning, because what I'm trying to achieve is having the cuticle lift up and off. If I keep the bit in the same direction that I'm working, then it's just gonna smush the cuticle back on the nail plate. That's not what do I wanna achieve. I wanna get it up and off so I can really tuck my polish. All right, also I'm always going to end in reverse because as you can see here, I'm taking my barrel and I'm laying it back on the cuticle and then I'm just gonna lightly tickle it, smoothing this out, pulling back the lateral fold Smoothing this area, as you can see how well it's exfoliating. And then just moving on to the other toes. And I'm gently just pushing into her proximal nail fold, just grooming, grooming, laying it back. If your client has a bunch of crusties in this area, laying my bit flat. If it's an excessive amount, then I would just use my skin bit, which is what I'll use here shortly. Pulling the skin tight.
what I'm trying to achieve right now is just to set the foot up for success for my gel polish or my regular polish application. However, you're moving the service forward as we're cleaning that nail plate and we're eliminating any moisture. Okay. Once you can't really see any longer what debris is still holding onto the foot, take your alcohol at least 70% or greater, spray the foot, and use a nylon brush to remove the debris. It's always important when you're e-filing to be able to see what you're filing. So we'll push it back. I always, too, use my nylon brush and push towards my client as I'm trying to open up this pocket. And cuticle is always trying to relax. Wow, what a difference you can see. Look at this, a safe, well-groomed, and right here, as you can see right here, we have a little more skin that didn't want to come off. So I would just quickly use my nippers or I would use a ball bit and just refine it so that I exfoliate those dead skin cells right off. Okay. But for the most part, I'm ready to move on with my service. I'm now going to take a pusher and just gently push the cuticle off the nail plate. This is going to help ensure that I don't over file. And at the same time, I'm just going to simply ask my client, how does this feel? Good. Great. And usually on the pinky toes, there's a lot of buildup. So instead of sitting here and really pushing and accidentally scraping my client, remember, I don't have any water or callus softener of any kind on top of the toes. So because of that, I am not relying on manual force. Now I'm going to show you the long and lean. You're going to use the long and lean in the forward direction at 5,000 RPMs, and we're not applying any force. We are just gently, the same way with the unicorn, we are just gently sweeping the dead skin cells off of the nail plate. Less is best. The long and lean has diamond particles at the tip of the bit. I'm relying on the diamond particles to lift the cuticle up and off the nail plate. So here's the long and lean. I'm going to work it in the forward direction at 5,000 RPMs. And as you can see, there's diamond on the head of this bit. So what I'm going to do is I am gently going to push. Pushing, I don't mean like abrasively because the diamond particles are going to be able to exfoliate it. Okay, so I'm gently pushing it and just sweeping. I'm not applying pressure on the nail plate. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to use the long and lean diamond tip and I'm going to push it into the proximal fold and exfoliate the dead skin cells off of the nail plate. Again, I'm not pushing into the nail plate. I am gently sweeping off those dead skin cells while also using the abrasiveness of the tip and pushing it into the proximal fold. Very similar to the unicorn, but here I have a straight edge. And I really like starting my pedicure off with the long and lean because look how clean that is. Very clean. I want to be cautious to make sure this edge right here, I'm not digging it. So if you see, I am not at this angle. I want to be flat and allow the tool to just exfoliate those dead skin cells. We are not like this because what's going to happen, those diamond particles on that edge would drill into the nail plate. We always want to be parallel. So parallel is flat to the nail plate and we're exfoliating, sweeping, sweeping. Right here, when we come to the lateral fold, we don't want to cause any damage. So we are changing the angle in which we're filing. Again, in the forward direction, 5,000 RPMs, pulling back the skin and filing. I'm not going to worry about this right side. I'm going to do all of the left side, and I'm going to do that on all 10 toes before switching to the reverse direction. Okay. And what's nice is this is diabetic friendly. There's, n there's no cutting. This is just exfoliation. This is just using something abrasive and just scratching those skin cells off. And I'm pushing to that proximal fold, exposing more of the nail plate. If you're new to e-filing or dry manicuring or dry pedicuring, this is the place to start, okay? Always changing your angle. All right, so right here, now that we're more crusty on this toe right here, I've increased my RPMs to 18,000, and I'm going to take this edge and just exfoliate nicely the dead cuticle. So go ahead and watch. 
Starting in the center of the nail and working to the left. Remember, I'm not curving it out. So I'm just doing pass after pass and I'm allowing the tool. It can't be rushed, but we can definitely accelerate the process. Beautiful. I'm allowing the tool to do the work. Look at that. Wow, looks good. Okay, I really wanna show you how good it looks. So I'm just gonna take some alcohol. Now that we've done one pass, always using my nylon brush towards my client. Oh my gosh, look how good this looks. Several passes. As you can see, there's no groove in the nail. I just simply quickly clean that up. I've done all of the toes, and as you can see, they look great. But to keep that really defined open look, I'm now switching my e-file to reverse 5,000 RPMs and working center to right. We want to move the opposite direction in which our bit is spinning. That is why, since we are in the reverse direction and we're moving down the right side, is because doing so is lifting the cuticle so that we can exfoliate it. That is also why this process has to be done dry. If there's moisture in the foot, you're not gonna get the same results. Dry is best for so many reasons that we've already covered. I'm also gonna lay it flat. Also, if you accidentally nick your client, run. Just kidding. I'm just totally kidding. Just like nails, you're gonna practice the, the bloodborne pathogen procedure. You're just gonna stop what you're doing and you're just gonna clot the blood, okay? I don't wanna say it's foolproof, but I wanna make sure that you're prepared. Honestly, I feel like I have way more control with the bits and the scratching motion versus using blades and just cutting. Especially when you soak in the water, that transparent cuticle can often be kind of hard to tell what is alive and what is dead. Where here, I am very aware of what is alive and what is dead. So this is my basic pedicure. So that means I just use regular polish, all right? If you are doing gel, this is what I recommend is using your diamond bit to scuff up the surface. Yes, you can do that with diamond. There's no point in switching your bits back and forth. Continue to move the surface forward. So just rough up. We don't want to buff. We're just roughing that surface to make sure that you'll have good product bonding. Very good. It's good to have multiple sets of bits. That way it just accelerates your process. So instead of disinfecting between every client, you just grab your next set and you're ready to go. And then disinfecting like between lunch or whenever you schedule a break, which you should be scheduling a break. Perfect, pulling back that skin. All right, let's go ahead and take another look. I'm spraying my 70% alcohol on the toes, using my nylon brush, pushing, 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 pushing. And let's take a look. They look beautiful, they look healthy. I'm gonna be able to get in there with my polish and do it nice and tight. I'm not competing against any dead skin cells, you guys. This is awesome. My client is going to see a difference. She's gonna feel a difference and her pedicure is going to last longer, all right? What you can do is you can also use the long and lean as well as the unicorn and do a hybrid. So my client today, she had very basic. So what I did is I showed you two different ways. For me, however, I love using that long and lean because I feel that diamond top and being able to push it into the proximal nail fold versus using a rounded top, I'm able to really map out the way the cuticle looks. Now, if somebody has like really deep lateral folds and is really crusty, I want to use my unicorn and clean in these areas. So don't just think it's one way or the other. It really is creating a hybrid process of what works for each client. And that is what I love about dry pedicuring is it's so customizable. My client comes to me for a basic and then I evaluate her whole foot and say, okay, what does she need and what are her foot care goals? Now that we have cleaned the cuticles, we've done our shaping, my last step is to use my pedicure excavator. The reason that I do this at the very end is because when I'm making dust with my diamond bits, I wanna make sure that I'm not leaving anything on the nail plate. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm checking for spicula, which is toenail that is growing into the skin. I'm also removing soap, scum, sock, dog hair. I'm not gonna lie, it's like my favorite part. Seeing the treasure that we can dig out. Usually clients who feel some discomfort say afterwards this felt amazing because what we're doing is we're relieving pressure. In this case, I'm just cleaning it out, making sure that I don't have any, I don't feel a catch. If I feel a catch, then I know I need to go in there with my rasp and start reducing the toenail. All right, great. I'm always pulling, I'm not going back and forth. And if your client says there's some discomfort here, that is when you would grab your callus softener and spray just the great toe, rub it in and allow that product to start breaking down those dead skin cells, all right? What's nice with using a callus softener is there's no acid, which means you don't have to neutralize it. So your body's only gonna absorb what it needs to break down those dead skin cells. It's awesome. And the reason that I do this after I do my exfoliation with diamond bits is because what are those diamond bits doing? They're creating dust. So that's why it's my last step. All right, now that we've successfully have done that, we are going to take our diamond pedicure bit and we are going to focus on her great toe, doing some reducing of callus here, as well as around her metatorsal area and around the heel. This is my basic pedicure. So I'm just gonna use a diamond bit to exfoliate. If my client has a lot or really thick callus, then I'm gonna use my carbide to do a majority of that debulking because it's quicker. I will do that in my next demo. Now that we've completed the toes and their shaping and their cutting, we're now gonna to transition to the bottom. So in our Petty Plus Toes Kit, I am going to grab the skin bit. Again, this is my basic pedicure, so I'm only using my diamond burr. These little diamond particles are just going to scratch off and exfoliate the dead skin cells around her foot. So let's recap what we're gonna cover. We are going to soften this area here, right in here, as well as the heel. In the forward direction, we are gonna run our bits on high speed. So that's probably one of the number one things I see people with e-filing do, is they're running their e-files too low and applying force. So we're in the forward direction and we're gonna run anywhere between 25 and 30,000 RPMs. So I'm working in a circular motion. This is when it's really important to be wearing a K95 mask because we do not want to be breathing this in. For recording purposes, I'm making an exception. So here I am working in a rounded position. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for signs of the skin to start changing to, on white skin, a more pink color. On darker skin, it becomes more yellow, all right? I'm also feeling to see if it's getting warm. I'm gonna ask my client to stay in contact with me. If it gets warm for any reason, let me know. And I'm just working, I'm maximizing the tool. Great. So I don't wanna just use the tip of the bit. I wanna use as much of the bit so it can have equal wear. And right now, I can see that it's getting pink. It's starting to feel warm, so I'm gonna move on. Continue to move the process forward. Right here in the toe, it's really important to make sure I'm just staying on the callus skin and not rocking the bit all over. Because we are working at higher RPM, there can be a quick heat spike. So it's extremely important to just stay on that callus area. And how does this feel? Good. I am not applying much force. I am literally just keeping contact. If your client is really ticklish, make sure you have a firm grip. Since my client's not, we're just here, softening, softening, softening. I'm even gonna go over the tips of the toes just to soften this area. Softening the skin, exfoliating what's dead. That way when I go to apply my mousse, she's gonna get beautiful looking results. All right, now let's go ahead and jump to the heel. So with the heel, when we are actually debulking or exfoliating the calluses, we don't necessarily wanna go with the grain of the foot because that's how our foot's biomechanics work. It's used to taking pressure in this action. What we wanna do is work in a circular motion or against it. Okay, so by against it is if the skin is growing up like this, 
when we go from left to right, what we're doing is we're lifting that skin up and exfoliating off. So that is what I'm doing here in a circular, in a circular motion, I'm just going through the heel, maximizing, and look at myself. Like, yes, I am working in a controlled and I'm not doing this vigorous back and forth motion. I'm very controlled. If my client says it's warm, I know exactly where it's warm. So I'm in a controlled area. If my client has a lot of callus, then I would be switching and using my carbides first and then my diamond. So carbide's gonna accelerate it. But since this is my basic petty and she doesn't have a lot of callus, what I'm just doing is softening the skin. That way, when she gets home, she starts walking in her carpet, putting on her pants. She's not feeling that catchy. All right, for some of you who like the idea of still finishing with a foot rasp, I strongly recommend just having a good grip on the foot and using your diamond bit. I am running at 29,000 RPMs. I am running fast with light pressure. And since my client's not ticklish, I am just going over the skin. Sometimes too, when they have that buildup in their foot of dirt or leather from their flip-flops, just a simple exfoliation, just scratching that out it looks very attractive. And I'm just gonna tell my client, if there's any warmth, just let me know. This is looking great. Then I'm just gonna cover the whole foot just to soften it up. For the basic pedicure, that's when I just am going to do my everyday polish. So at this point, I'm gonna use my Poto Expert Orange Label Cracked Dry and Cracked Skin. All you need is a walnut size. We're just going to apply this mousse. And what I love about the Poto Expert product is that it's diabetic friendly, okay? Extremely important. What I also like about it is that its application is so smooth and it's results driven product. It's an FDA cleared product that actually repairs the skin. Safe in between the toes, it's not occlusive, which means that there's not this oily layer that just sits on the foot. By the time my client is putting on her shoes, there's not gonna be this greasy feel, okay? Now that I've applied my mousse, I'm now going to put the cuticle oil on. I'm doing this because again, I'm doing regular polish. So I want to do the oil and the mousse and then I'll use alcohol in my cleanser and do the polish. I recommend that you try out the polishing ball, which would soften all this skin. It's awesome. I'm gonna work that in, use my pusher. Just gonna tuck the skin. All right, now that we've applied our oil, we have to go back and use like our cleanser, acetone, alcohol, any kind of product. And I'm just going over the toenails and removing the oil and mousse. And I'm just using like acetone. Awesome. And make sure I have a cleaned off surface before I add my polish. I feel that clients have too many choices. Studies actually show that more options that we give people, the less satisfied they become with their choice. There's anxiety in our culture to make sure we're choosing the best option. Sometimes less is more. Because of that, I think pedicure can be broken down into three categories, basic, luxury, and wellness. Price and time will depend on your demographic, experience, service style, so see this as a fluid range, okay? The basic pedi being the average 45 minute pedi includes toenail trimming, shaping, basic cuticle and callus exfoliation with polish. This can be around $45. The luxury pedicure would include everything in the basic plus things like scrubs, masks, hot towels, whatever you want to make it more fancy and a fluffy experience. This service would take around 60 minutes and cost $65. When it comes to removing scrubs and masks, I encourage you to use warm, hot towels and do this 
after the exfoliation because remember, this is a dry service. And lastly, a wellness petty is a hygienic palliative care. This would be about 35 minutes and cost $50. The service focuses on foot health, trimming toenails for those who can't, diabetic care and elderly care. Now that we have a baseline for pricing, what about the pedicures that require callus debulking? I treat this as an add-on. If someone needs additional time for callus reduction, I would add 15 to 25 minutes to the service and charge an additional $25. Not everyone will need this service, but for those who do need it, it's going to take more time. Therefore, you can charge more because your time equals money. Just like nail art, the more complicated the art, more time you take, the more you charge. Not only will you be doing your body a favor by reducing strain in your back, neck, and wrists, but you'll achieve a pedicure with a specific goal in mind. A dry e-file pedicure is an experience that will keep your clients coming back because it's safe and longer lasting. Now it's time to practice and introduce the dry e-file pedicure to your clients.